What's up, YouTube? Um, this time we're gonna do another prediction check, and this is the second and final amendment to to my prediction board. You can see this new prediction on the chain on the chain bear board. I added it here because I was kind of uh, bothered by the total amount of predictions being 49. So I decided to add a new one to have a 50. Now, why Mercedes win Mexico? Well, Mercedes, ever, ever since Mexico came back, have dominated Mexico with the exception of last year when this happened. Ganó Max Verstappen, enhorabuena. Al piloto holandés lo hace con el Red Bull, victoria en México. Acaba por delante de los Mercedes, quien ganara en 2015-2016. Adiós a la hegemonía de los Mercedes aquí en México. Valtteri Bottas, segunda posición. Luis Hamilton va a ser campeón del mundo. Goodbye to Mercedes hegemony in Mexico, except no. The Kvyat boost was activated for Max Verstappen, and um, Valtteri Bottas ended up in P2 when Lewis Hamilton was world champion. And the two races prior have all gone to Mercedes, winning Nico, Nico Rosberg in 2015, Lewis Hamilton in 2016. So, it's only natural that this hegemony continues this year. Without the Kvyat boost, Kvyat gone for good, Max Verstappen cannot win in Mexico or anywhere unless something drastic changes. And when it comes to the, the other um, prediction, prediction in my predictions board, when it comes to the trophy in Mexico, I predicted that it would be uh, Enrique Peña Nieto giving the trophy because by the time the Mexican Grand Prix happened, Enrique Peña Nieto would only have one month left in charge. The problem is that I needed to, uh, to add another three here and... Um, yeah. Well, well uh, Miguel Angel Mancera, who is the mayor of Mexico City today, either, it's either them or one of the elect, uh, president elect or mayor elects of Mexico City, for two reasons. First, the Autodromo Hermano Rodriguez is technically the property of the, of the city's government, and Enrique Peña Nieto is uh, quite unpopular here in Mexico because. Uh, in part for some uh, scandal in Ayotzinapa back in 2014. So here we go with the predictions board. Kimi hasn't said anything about his retirement and when it comes to 14's winning races only three have the same three that um, have won last year basically the stereotype winning. Honda good but unreliable. Um, once again, my criteria is one good race, one bad race. We already have that one really good race for Pierre Gasly in um, in Bahrain, and one terrible for both in China. And once again, we had another terrible one in Spain um, earlier this week. 15 cars get engine penalties. I decided to take on Brendan Hartley because technically it was not a penalty. But he did have a serious problem, he had to start from the pit lane and so on. Um, I think, well I don't remember if it was from the pit lane, but he didn't make a time in qualifying. I needed the point and I took it. And um, that means we have five, um, five drivers, 15. If we need, the, we, need, we need 15 for the full point and if we get eight, which we only have three to go, um, we'll get the half point. McLaren, once again, didn't ruin the um, orange livery, the um, papaya livery looks lovely. Uh, Red Bull, fancy unique livery, they promised it but didn't deliver. Um, big crash causes halo controversy, well, it wasn't exactly a controversy, but I'm gonna cite Formula World here, another one of my favorite YouTubers when it comes to Formula 1, because the halo found itself in the spotlight once again. This time, due to it actually doing what it was designed to do, protect the driver's head. During the race, Nisei Fukuzumi's car collided with and launched onto Tadasuke Makino's car and rode up alongside of it before coming back down. 
The incident didn't look like much, but the evidence borne by Makino's car gives an idea of what may likely have happened to his head had the halo not been... Now, this uh, video clip goes fully to fully on credit of the uh, YouTuber called Formula World. I absolutely love his videos. He's absolutely brilliant when it comes to the news of Formula One. And yeah, it's not exactly a controversy. Pretty much everyone involved it agrees that the that the Halo saved Makino's life. But we need the point, and we'll take it. IndyCar adopts the shield, but Formula 1 rejects it. It's clear that the Formula 1 will reject the windshield, but the, here's a little article by WTF1 when it comes to the, mm, the windshield. Uh, it hasn't been implemented yet, but it may be implemented in some time in the future. If it's implemented by the end of this year, we will take the point. Super hard use only once. Uh, so far, only the the British Grand Prix um, has been has been announced, and well, all the ones before it. And under and for the first time in F1 history, Great Britain will have um, a cyan a hard tire. However, the super hard hasn't been. Um, announced for any race but we still have Germany, Hungary and all those all the way to Abu Dhabi uh, when Abu Dhabi is announced we will know Liberty Media overcompensate on grid girls we know that they did uh, bec because um, you know mm, the grid girls are, are gone but the, but the grid kits cannot be seen on the English language broadcast and Monaco will have great girls. That's overcompensation, and the 2021 reforms will get rid of the MGUH as far as uh, as much as I hate to say it, but they're gonna get rid of them. Bottas finishing fourth or lower. He is third so far behind Vettel, and his teammate is obviously the championship leader. But we're so far ahead in the season that we don't know yet. And speaking of Hamilton. It seems like he's gone back on on track and it might be just a time to call it um, a championship. However, as much as it was absolutely brilliant, his um, performance on qualifying in Spain, getting, give, giving him obviously pole position, I refuse to call it uh, a championship decider because of how early we are in the season. Mercedes win in Mexico. Once again, Mexico is, isn't going to happen until just after Thanksgiving. Uh, Red Bull sign Alonso. I find it likely, but it hasn't been announced yet. Uh, Red Bull signing Honda. It probably will. I'm betting it will happen, but not yet. New aerodynamic rules on ground effects for, 20, for 2019. All the rule changes I've heard of so far have to do with um, overtaking and DRS and making sure the Azerbaijan Red Bull crash doesn't happen again. Uh, Le Mans is gonna happen in June, uh, we only have four weeks left. Um, Liberty Media spies up the pre-race show, well, the initial part of the English language broadcasts have been amazing, so we get the point. Silverstone haven't saved the British Grand Prix, but we have we have to wait to see. Uh, one new race winner. Um, one uh, all the races, all the race winners so far have been predictable. Uh, Vettel scores twice, Kimi's points. It doesn't. It didn't help Kimi the fact that he had to retire because of engine failure in Spain, but because uh, Vettel finished P4. The ratio is 1.625, up from 1.375 in Azerbaijan. Ha no one has gotten a race ban yet, and I hope it doesn't happen. And Red Bull will not finish second. It's still, still really early in the season, but they're not going to finish second. Williams will finish, will definitely finish seventh or lower. They are the laughing stock of the paddock and will continue to be and there hasn't been any nonsense red flag for the chamber bingo we have 
four points out of 25. Uh, no one has come out of the closet, and Alonso hasn't made a reference to his resting pick. Uh, as for the shitless pictures, we have the, exactly the same as uh, last time, with 75% 70, with of the, um, the point. Stroll's picture is worth only half, because it's out of time frame. Um, Charles Leclerc keep his, keeps his big red X, meaning he's giving us 75% of the point. No one has had any Russia joke that's gone viral enough to count. Mexico is going to happen in, in late October. Um, Kimi Raikkonen agree on Team Radio. Uh, he was rather angry at Ocon, even though it was, in my opinion, fully his fault. Uh, the um, Kimi Ocon incident. Crashes in Monaco and Singapore. Um, Monaco is in just two weeks, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna have crashes. We're gonna, have, if it has crashes, we're gonna half point and wait until Singapore, which will be in like September, until we can um, know for sure if we can get the other half point for the full, to have the full point in this board. As for no DNFs, I crossed it as um, grey, however, Brendan Hartley did, fini did finish more than 90% of race length, which means we can give ourselves a half point. I needed, not because it was technically finished, but because I want, I really want that point. Um, no one has been, has been disqualified. In fact, the last time someone was disqualified was in 2015. Um, Hamilton was nowhere in the beginning of the season because of karma for... I'm so sad right now. Look at my nephew. Why are you wearing a princess dress? Is this what you got for Christmas? <laughs> Why did you ask for a princess dress for Christmas? Boys don't wear princess dresses! My pants would be proud. We get the point and Foreigner giving an interview in Spanish. Well, so far, as far as I know, none, none of the... Um, Actually, none of the races in the grid right now have um, done that. However, looking at, looking at um, Colombian broadcast for the Spanish Grand Prix, um, this happened. Un gusto verte de vuelta en la parrilla como presidente de la SICA, además, ¿no? Well, actually, as a as a uh, friend, you know, como un amigo, estoy aquí para para ver a los amigos, para dar un abrazo a las personas que trabajé por eh, 16 años es eh, un, un, un placer estar aquí una situación completamente diferente no no en el coche pero fuera para para ver la, la, la carrera cómo ves la carrera hoy y una palabra sobre el momento que vive Williams que a ti también te debe doler un poco verlo tan mal a pensar que va a ser una una carrera disputada de Mercedes de Ferrari eh, Tenemos que, que ver lo que va a acontecer en los lo start. Eh, pienso que va a ser una lucha contra Mercedes y Ferrari. El momento de la Williams no es fácil. Eh, eh, espero que puedan mejorar y e encontrar el, el problema y la solución ¿no? para hacer un coche más competitivo. No es fácil, fácil el problema, pero espero el mejor para ellos. ¿Llueve o no llueve? Tal vez. Eh, puede ser. Okay. He has a really strong accent, uh, but his pronunciation is really well uh, for, for a Brazilian. He speaks Spanish really well. We get the point. Uh, ten races will have a first lap drama. Um, Australia and China didn't, but all the rest have, especially Spain, that complete idiot Grosjean making all the uh, making that move I mean what was he thinking um, no one has been sent to the back of the grid and Verstappen for obvious reasons hasn't been driver of the day and yeah Ocon hasn't been on the podium yet and I really hope it happens however I find it rather unlikely uh, trophy in Mexico we already talked about that at the beginning of the video um, once again uh, we get the point if it's either Enrique Mianieto um, Miguel Ángel Mancera, or the president, or the president of Mexico City mayor elect of Mexico City. Um, no injuries or deaths. Francesco Sigorini, negative. 
uh, Andres Manuel loses the Mexican Total Election. Once again, uh, yeah, this is how the, um, the board was um, last time we checked the prediction. Um, the difference from then to now is rather small with Andres Manuel being miles ahead. The um, election is the day of the Austrian Grand Prix. Verstappen doing something stupid, we already got that point. We'll get used to the Halo, I, l I actually love the Halo, especially si since the Halo graphics um, introduced in Azerbaijan, and now that a driver, an F2 driver has been saved by the Halo. 10 races will have pit stop problems, so far only Azerbaijan has gone unscathed. Um, Perez had a bit of a problem um, in FP1 because of an unsafe release and Esteban Ocon spent way too much time in um, in his pit box causing terrible problems not that that didn't even matter since he ended up retiring because of engine failure for the first time in his fifth one career Force India hasn't smashed into each other and I hope they don't and being, when it comes to the um, Mexican peso devaluating I'm actually preparing for this because um, with Andres Manuel winning the election, um, the Mexican peso will um, lose most of mo most of its value, and that means um, that I am able to buy now some foreign currency, and the um, the the thing I'm going to use to evaluate this point at the end of the year is I get the point if I can s extract more more pesos than I put in into this entire gamble and 19th of September my birthday uh, has gone terribly wrong the last three years in a row but we're gonna have to wait and if to see if something goes wrong this year 6.25 um, 6.25 points um, so far which gives us a total of 10.25 points out of 50 that's up from 7.75 uh, last time we checked and yeah thank you very much for watching